So a few months back, I did a complete breakdown of the iVanky Fusion Dock Max 1. And honestly, I was pretty excited about it. But you know how it is with tech reviews. The real test isn't what happens in the first week, it's what happens after months of daily use. When the honeymoon phase is over and reality sets in. The Fusion Dock Max 1 has been a top performing docking station in the Thunderbolt 4 era, praised for its ultra-stable performance and exceptional display output capabilities. Since its release, it's garnered strong traction among MacBook Pro users, creative professionals and hybrid workers like myself. My name is Daniel, and I think it's time for some real talk about what it's actually like to use this thing day in and day out. Guys, make sure you check out all the useful links in the description after watching this video. There might be some nice discounts there. Let's get into it. The Daily Reality Check Here's the thing about docking stations. They either become an invisible part of your workflow or they become a constant source of frustration. There's really no middle ground. After using this setup every single morning for work and every evening for personal projects, I can tell you exactly which category this dock falls into. From day one, the connection process has been absolutely bulletproof. I wake up, grab my MacBook, plug in that single cable, and everything just comes alive. My dual monitors light up, my external drives mount immediately. The audio switches over to my soundbar through the optical connection, and I'm ready to work. No fiddling, no waiting, no please try connecting again messages. This is that proven reliability everyone talks about. Stable performance over long-term use, that's actually durable and premium. It's not just marketing speak. The forgotten upgrade. You know what's funny? I completely forgot about one of the biggest upgrades until I was setting up at a coffee shop last week. I went to plug in my phone charger and realized I didn't have enough ports on my MacBook alone. That's when it hit me. I've been spoiled by having basically unlimited connectivity for months. At home, I've got my mechanical keyboard connected. My mouse. Multiple memory cards that I just leave plugged in because why not? Various charging cables for clients' devices. And I'm still not even close to maxing out the available ports. The extensive I.O. on this thing is honestly perfect for MacBook users who prioritize creative workflows. It's one of those upgrades you don't fully appreciate until you're forced to go without it. Heat and heavy lifting. Now let's talk about something that actually matters for long-term use. Performance under pressure. I do a lot of video editing work. And there are days when I'm pushing everything pretty hard. Multiple 4K timelines open. Files transferring in the background. Displays running at full resolution. The whole nine yards. Does the dock get warm? Absolutely. Sometimes it gets genuinely hot to the touch. But here's the thing. It keeps working. I've never had a throttle performance. Or disconnect devices because of heat. The built-in ventilation design seems to handle it just fine. And honestly, I'd rather have a dock that runs hot but stable than one that stays cool but drops connections. Network reliability. I'll be honest, I was skeptical about using the Ethernet port at first. My Wi-Fi is pretty solid, and I'm not usually doing anything that requires the absolute fastest connection. But during a particularly busy month, when I was uploading a lot of large video files, I decided to give the wired connection a shot. The difference is real, not just in speed, but inconsistency. No more wondering if a large upload failed because of Wi-Fi hiccups. No more pause and resume cycles. Just steady, reliable data transfer. That lets me focus on other things while files move in the background. Guys, before we move on, I try to make my content fun instead of boring. And in return, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content I make. Morning routine transformation. Let me paint you a picture of what my morning routine used to look like versus what it looks like now. Before, I'd sit down at my desk and spend the first five minutes of my day plugging things in. Monitor cable here, power cable there. Oh wait, I need to connect my external drive. Where's my card reader? Why isn't my second monitor showing up properly? Now, I sit down, plug in one cable, and I'm immediately in work mode. My brain doesn't have to shift into tech troubleshooting mode before I can shift into creative mode. The 96 watt charging is perfect for my MacBook Pro. And that powerful yet practical setup means I never have to think about power management. It sounds dramatic. But that mental overhead was more exhausting than I realized. The reliability factor. After months of daily use, I can count on one hand the number of times I've had any kind of connection issue. Maybe twice the dock didn't immediately recognize the memory card. And I had to unplug and replug it. That's it. No driver issues. No compatibility problems. No mysterious disconnections in the middle of important work. For someone who used to keep a mental inventory of which ports were finicky and which cables were reliable, this level of consistency is honestly refreshing. 
I don't think about the dock anymore. It just works, which is exactly what you want from infrastructure. Creative Workflow Impact The real test of any creative tool is whether it disappears into your workflow or constantly reminds you of its presence. After months of use, I can say confidently that this dock has become invisible in the best possible way. What really blows me away is the display capability. This thing supports three 6K monitors at 60 Hz plus one 4K monitor at 120 Hz. That's quad monitor support that's still leading the pack, even compared to newer TB5 docks. When I'm deep in an editing session, switching between footage on different drives, I'm not thinking about data transfer speeds or connection stability. When I need to grab footage from a memory card, I just plug it in without wondering if it'll work properly. When I want to show something to a client on the big screen, the displays just work. That mental bandwidth that used to go toward managing my technical setup now goes toward actual creative work, and that's made a measurable difference in both my productivity and my enjoyment of the work itself. How it stacks up against other TB5 docks? Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, but how does this actually stack up against other Thunderbolt 5 docks? Look, I've tested docking stations for a while now. I've used stuff like the CalDigit TS4 and OWC Thunderbolt Hub. So I've got some perspective here. The Fusion Dock Max one hits 40 gigabytes per second bandwidth. Other Thunderbolt 5 docks claim 80 or even 120 gigabytes per second. But here's the reality. That higher speed only kicks in for external displays in video optimized mode. For everyday use, file transfers, multiple monitors or charging, the Fusion Dock is already fast enough that you won't notice any bottlenecks. Display support, this handles up to four monitors. Most other Thunderbolt 5 docks limit you to dual monitors, especially on MacBooks. So Iwenki actually stepped up here. Real-life applications like multiple displays and Pro Workflow still crown the Fusion Dock Max one as the display king. Power delivery is 96 watts, which is perfect for most laptops, including my MacBook Pro. Other docks push 140 watts. But unless you've got a really power-hungry setup, you're paying extra for watts you'll never use. And compatibility, this is huge. I've had issues with newer docks where devices wouldn't play nice. iWank has been in the game long enough that their compatibility is rock solid. Some other Thunderbolt 5 docks are still working out the kinks. Bottom line, if you want bleeding edge specs and don't mind premium prices or potential compatibility issues, there are faster options. But for most people, content creators, remote workers, anyone who just wants reliability, the Fusion Dock Max 1 hits that sweet spot of performance, features and stability. TB4 or TB5? The real answer. Alright, so here's the big question. Should you actually get Thunderbolt 5 or is Thunderbolt 4 still the way to go? Because honestly, this isn't just about specs on paper. It's about what you actually do with your setup. Now with Thunderbolt 5 products entering the market, some people may hesitate or shift focus due to perceived speed upgrades. But here's the thing. While TB5 offers higher bandwidth, the Fusion Dock Max one remains an unparalleled leader in multi-display support, power delivery and reliability. If you're a content creator, and I'm talking video editors and photographers, music producers and designers, Thunderbolt 4 is probably still your sweet spot. I know that sounds weird, but hear me out. TB4 is mature, it's stable and it handles everything you throw at it without any weird compatibility issues. When you're on a deadline and need to transfer huge video files or run multiple high-res monitors, you want something that just works every single time. Same goes if you're on a MacBook Pro. Anything from M1 to M4 Pro or Max. These machines already have plenty of power and TB4 docks give you all the connectivity you need without breaking the bank. And if you're someone who just wants a solid productivity setup, dual or triple monitors, reliable power delivery, all your peripherals connected, TB4 is honestly perfect. You're getting proven technology that's been refined over years. Now, who should consider Thunderbolt 5? Well, if you're doing VR work, editing 8K video, or running those crazy high refresh rate displays, then yeah, you might actually use that extra bandwidth. Or if you're the type who always wants the latest tech and you're planning to keep your setup for the next few years, TB5 could be future-proofing. Gamers and developers with really demanding hardware setups might see some benefits too. And if you're an early adopter who likes being on the cutting edge, even if it means dealing with some growing pains, then TB5 is pretty exciting. But here's my honest take. TB5 is promising, but for real-world use, Thunderbolt 4 is already more than fast enough. 
The Fusion Dock Max 1 hits the sweet spot between performance and price. No overpaying for unneeded specs. Unless you're doing something really specific that actually needs that extra speed, you're probably better off saving your money and going with a solid TB4 dock. The performance difference in day-to-day -day use? You're not going to notice it. The honest assessment. Look, guys, I'm not going to pretend this thing is perfect. It's expensive, it gets hot under load, and the cables could be longer. But after three months of daily use, those minor annoyances fade into the background compared to the massive improvement in day-to-day -day usability. This is what makes it a smart, high-performance choice for today's workflows. It's not about having the latest and greatest on paper, it's about having something that actually works reliably every single day. Would I buy it again knowing what I know now? Without question. Would I recommend it to other creators who are serious about their workspace? Absolutely. The peace of mind alone, knowing that my desk setup is going to work reliably every single day, has been worth the investment. Final thoughts. All right, my friends, that's a wrap. Sometimes the best products are the ones you forget you're using. The iVanky Fusion Dock Max 1 has become such an integral part of my daily routine that I honestly don't think about it anymore. It just works, day after day. If you're on the fence about investing in a high-end docking solution, my advice is this. Don't think of it as buying a gadget. Think of it as buying back your time and mental energy. Because that's really what you're getting here. Thanks for watching this follow-up. And let me know in the comments if you've had similar experiences with docking stations. Or if there are other long-term tech reviews you'd like to see. Feel free to check out the links in the description below. You might find some discounts there. As usual, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time.